All right, let's jump over to the team who made the biggest moves, kind of bookended the the offseason, I guess, yeah. the, the New York Knicks, uh, already making the move for Mikhail Bridges uh, months ago, and now uh, the Carl Anthony Towns trade, which we detailed yesterday and was, I mean, incredible how the lengths they went to in order to get that done. But now let's talk about them filling out the roster. They've got spots open. Uh, news broke. I believe it was either today or, or this morning or late last night. It all kind of blurs together, but uh, they added TJ Warren. Uh, on an Exhibit 10 deal. What are the Knicks going to look to do here to, to finish out their roster? By my count, they do have a few spots open here. Yeah, they've got 12 guys under standard contracts right now. They've got five guys on camp deals. So the five guys on the camp deals, uh, you can see them, but a couple only just got signed. Um, so we haven't added them yet uh, fully here to, to spot track, but it's TJ Warren, Landry Shaman, and then the other guys that they, they actually – waived Chumo KK, brought him back in because they, they needed to clear the roster spot uh, to make, make the move. And then they added um, Alex O'Connell and who am I forgetting? Uh, Damian Baugh, who actually was with the Lakers uh, mm-hmm. briefly. Um, Baugh and O'Connell certainly are going to be guys that are headed to the G League. They are your standard uh, Exhibit 10 traditional type sure. guys. Warren and Shamit and I think OKK is probably going to the G League as well. So really what, what the Knicks are in position. So remember, they they did all the machinations that they had to do to yeah. try to get to a place where they could – they knew they were going to be hard capped, but stay hard capped at the second apron and not trigger a first apron hard cap. They're about $3.6 million under the first apron. So – Minimum veteran minimum salary for this season. Uh, on the screen, you can see the guy I would point to look at Cameron Payne. He's on a one year veteran minimum deal, mm-hmm. about 2.1 million. So you fill one more spot with that. That's 2.1 million. That brings you up to 13 players. You eventually have to get to 14. You can only right. have 28 total days in a season where you have less than uh, 14 players on standard contracts. So you're going to get there sooner rather than later. You don't have another. You you now only have about 1.5 million left. That is not enough for a uh, another veteran minimum. It's also not enough for a, a one year minimum. So a guy like Jacob Toppin, who's on a two way, sure. couldn't even do him. It is also not enough to just sign any undrafted rookie you want to a rookie minimum deal because a undrafted player who you did not have draft rights on counts for the tax and the apron purposes as the two year minimum, as opposed to a veteran minimum who who has some, uh, or, or as opposed to just a rookie minimum guy who you own the draft rights for, Uh they count at the 1.1. It's like 1.1 and change. Um, that, that is the minimum salary. So for the Knicks, this means it's likely going to be, I think it's probably going to be Landry Shamit because if just just if you look at the roster, they need somebody to replace the Dante DiVincenzo role with, mm-hmm. with some shooting, and that's presumably what Shamit can do. So I think it's more most likely to be him. Then I think it's going to be either Ariel Huck Forty or Kevin McCullough Jr., who's on the two way contracts. That one of those two will slide over um, into the uh, Knicks. Um, uh, last roster spot on spot. a rookie minimum deal with 1.1 million because they were both Knicks draftees or at least guys they had draft rights on. They are in a position where then they would count for that, just that 1.1 million. So super complicated. Here's the last piece. You do it that way. You're like 300 K clear. That's not of the second apron where you're hard cap. That's not enough to sign anybody. So the Knicks are going to go into the season much like the Golden State Warriors. We talked about this when they uh, brought Quentin Post on to a two-way. You are in a position where you cannot even fill your 15th roster spot. You don't have room under the hard cap until we're deep into the season and a prorated deal is like 300 k or less, or you make another move to clear up a little more uh, salary room underneath that second apron hard cap. So they've done great work to this point, but they're going to be sitting a little light um, on the roster for probably a period of, I'm going to say probably till at least around the trade deadline. Then maybe then they'll they'll figure something out. Well, so now most I think Knicks fans and most NBA fans will hear TJ Warren and think, well, that's the biggest name 
that they're out of here, is there a path for them to to just keep him? Or is it because his minimum will be too much that even though he just got added, got added to an Exhibit 10 and they have open roster spots, that it's unlikely that he winds up being the guy? Yeah, you could keep him or Shamit. Can't One keep or the other. Okay. Unless you move move on from somebody else. And like they're not going to waive Jericho Sims. They need him uh, for front court depth behind Towns and with Robinson out. So unless there's another trade coming, and we continue to hear the swirl around, maybe they'll trade Mitchell Robinson. Sure. Maybe they'll do something there. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. Um, but, uh, yeah, they, it's you can only keep one of the two. You can't keep both of them. You don't have enough room. You only got about $3.6 million under that hard cap. Those two guys together, that's a little over $4 million. And it's like four million, four point two million and change. Um, so yeah, so you're in a spot where you can't, you can't, you couldn't keep both of them. So you got to make a decision. For me, I would probably go Shamit. I think he fills more of a need, and I think he's much more of a uh, short bet with Warren. It's he struggled to be healthy really since the bubble. Mm-hmm. Um, then who who knows? But they may look at and say, yeah, well, we could use another guy who's like a three four on this roster. And I wouldn't argue with that either, but. Let's let's see. My guess is it's Warren or Shamit. Then it's one of Huck Porty or McCuller uh, that gets converted, signed, and then off we go. And that's how they fill out this roster. 